Hey guys, welcome back to another week of, as you might have been able to tell from the title and the thumbnail, this week's week of theme is decluttering, purging, getting my collection down to the plants that I really, really love. And with parring down the collection um, means kind of reshifting things in my apartment. You would have known from my last video, is it my last? Yeah, my last video that I was saying um, that I'm actually moving my desk into, sorry, I thought I saw a cockroach outside. Uh, I'm moving my work desk into my plant room and we are converting the, office into more of like a guest bedroom slash vince's office yeah lots of changes happening around here i'm gonna get into sort of the nitty-gritty details of what's going to be going on throughout this week of but before we get into sort of this first part of week of um i have some things that i want to talk to you guys about really quick um if you punch if you hate long intros if you want to see only plants here's the timestamp. You can jump to that if not stick around so the first thing i want to talk about is my merch and i know it's been a long time coming i've been talking about this all year um there's just been so many things that have been holding me back mainly myself because i just keep overthinking the designs i keep overthinking what i want to do so finally i just like set a week where i was like we're gonna like bang out these designs i'm gonna get them up by october and that's gonna be that the scheduled launch of my merch is gonna go up on friday october 13th and i just thought it was really fitting most of the styles are gonna be unisex so i'm offering shirts uh crew neck sweatshirts and um crop tops so obviously the i mean crop tops can be unisex too if you you want to wear crop top or crop top um but there's going to be full length shirts uh oversized shirts yeah crew necks and most of the styles have sizes up to a 3xl and i think the crew necks go all the way to a 5xl which is great because i wanted to work with a dropship company that offered um larger sizes a lot of the companies I was looking into, they really only offered up to like extra large, which I didn't think was acceptable considering I'm, I literally wear a large myself. So I wanted to make sure that we had some bigger sizes. There are going to be three designs. I'm still kind of going back and forth about a fourth design, but I don't want to just put something out for the sake of having more styles. I feel pretty good about the styles that I'm releasing. So we'll kind of see. I am just waiting for my samples to come in. I could have gotten the merch up sooner. Like it's already live, it's already up, but I wanted to make sure the quality was there and I wanted to make sure it was something that I would buy myself. So we're kind of just waiting on that. But Friday, October 13th is going to be the day that it goes up, hopefully and I will announce um, on a video before that like where you can find it and all that stuff. So, oh my gosh, I'm so out of breath. So that's that, um, I'm very nervous about it. Obviously this is like my first run and I don't know, I've just felt a lot of pressure. I'm like, what if people hate it? And I, I don't know, I feel really good about it. Um, I've shown it to my family, they really like it. My husband really likes it. So fingers crossed you guys like it too and that's the last housekeeping thing. Um, oh, and one thing I want to point out, I don't know if you guys can tell right now, but my cabinet is empty. So this cabinet is gonna be moving into my bedroom and I'm gonna be doing a whole, not like a huge setup, like this shelf is still staying there, but I'm doing something else on this side here. I'm getting some new lighting installed. Uh, that won't be included in this video just because I ordered Soltec lights and they're not going to be arriving for like another week to a week and a half and then the light fixture that I bought doesn't come until the end of the week. So that will be maybe for another video or I'll install it off camera and then just kind of show you guys um, once everything is in. But yeah, anywho, today's week of, I'm not going to be doing a ton of like hands-on plant stuff, but I did pull all of the plants that I'm purging and getting rid of. Um, I think I have close to 30 plants that I am getting rid of, not just like taking cuttings of it. I'm not even taking any like node cutting or whatever from it. I'm just straight up like purging all of it. Like the entire plant has got to go. I was going to make this its own video, like 30 plants I'm purging or whatever, but I figure since the theme of this week of is going to be purging anyway, I would just include it. 
um, in here. So that's what today is gonna be. And then if I have the energy for it and the voice for it, I do have um, a plant that I need to send out to a friend. And I was gonna show you guys um, what that was and show you kind of the, I guess, boxing up of it and cutting of it and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, oh my gosh, six minutes. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, I'm gonna just start bringing out the plants. First one up is my uh, climbing mandula. So if you guys watched that video, I'll just throw up the thumbnail now. Um, if you watched this video, you would have known that a while back I was attempting to size up my mandula and that repot did not go well at all. The entire plant just rotted. And so I did, I propagated it and I got a new one onto a pole. This is it now. So I haven't shown this plant in a while just because I don't know, it hasn't really been doing a whole lot. And honestly, the leaves don't look very mandula-ish, but they are really pretty. Like they have like really kind of like narrow and puckered uh, leaves. But something that I really love about the mandula is like the round puckered leaves and not so much this like almost pothos looking leaf. But I will say that the variegation on it is beautiful. Like this really, really beautiful sectoral variegation. There's not a ton of like this speckling. So in its own way, it's really, really magical too. But I've just found that it's not, it's not sparking joy. It's more of like a nuisance and a pain in my butt. And with me trying to like downsize my collection, I don't really need a mandula that is sizing up that has massive leaves i already have like some nice variegated plants that i love a lot like my friedek my elbow my epipremnum panatum and i don't know i just don't i just don't think that i need a super large mandula if anything it was a fun project but now that i'm kind of in this space where i need to like just have more time for myself and have more time to focus on the plants that i really really love i am going to get rid of this Luckily, um, Alice, not luckily, Alice's mandula died apparently. So I'm gonna give her this plant. Hopefully she likes the variegation on it. I did offer to chop my, uh, my trailing mandula. So, oh yeah, that's another thing to mention. It's not that I'm not gonna have a mandula at all. I love the mandula. It's one of my favorite, favorite um, epipremnums. Is it an epipremnum? Hello? Yeah, epipremnum aureum. Wow, my brain is just, it's like mush. So yeah, I still will have a mandula in my collection. I think I will always have a mandula in my collection, but I, I think I just much prefer it trailing. I just find it easier to grow, easier to maintain, less maintenance, takes up less space in terms of having a pole and stuff. So this one is gonna go. The second one is a little bit hard for me because I've had this for so long, um, but that is my variegated Sodoroy. I have talked about the variegation on Sodoroys in other videos. I'll see if I can link it in the description if I can remember which videos it is, um, but I'm not gonna talk about that now. I just feel like it's not, it's not really doing much for me in terms of the variegation. It's obviously, it's just, damaged DNA, that's that's what I'm telling myself. That's the, that's the theory I'm going with. And I just find the regular Sodoroy, Sodorini to be more beautiful, just as beautiful. And honestly, quiet on set, please. You guys, the trains, the trains. I feel like uh, train conductors in my area are like taking out some kind of like anger on us because literally like 3 a.m. they'll just be like blaring on their horns and I get that there's like a protocol when they're crossing what is it crossing crossing areas where like cars would be going but like don't you feel like it's a little bit weird for them to just like slam on the horn and not lay off of it for like what feels like two minutes straight it's just excessive it's insane I feel like a Karen right now um, anyway, so I yeah, like I said, I just don't I just don't feel like this is Doing any more for me than my current Sodoroy Sodorini is um, I will show what my Sodorini looks like in a upcoming favorites video I think that one's gonna go up. Oh next Saturday if I can remember correctly But anywho, oh, I was saying yeah when you get too much of that damaged DNA on some of the leaves and and it kind of like goes back and forth because like look at how variegated this one is and then you know it kind of just like eases up a bit but you know sometimes you can get leaves that are isolated like this that just get more and more and more 
um, like damaged or whatever and it just it just looks really like kind of gross and sickly um, so I'm just kind of ready to do away with it I know some people really really love this and they prefer it over the regu regular Soderoy but now that mine is like pretty much full size and like really big I just feel like I don't need this anymore and it's just taking up space it's one of those plants that I truly have only kept around because I've had it for so long and it almost feels like a crime to get rid of it but I'm telling you guys I'm just like in this mode where I'm like if you don't spark joy you're gone or if you take up too much space you're gone I know what you're thinking and I know there's gonna be people out there that are really disappointed in me um, just because I've like raved about the Mexicanum just constantly anytime I show it in a video I'm like you need a Mexicanum if you love like the long leaf plant but I it's just taking up too much space like I don't know if you guys can see how close these like internodes are um, and kind of just how long the petioles are they kind of have a similar growth pattern to like the UPI it's just it's a little bit too much and I've mentioned before that I'm not a huge fan of the way the um, Mexicanums look in full maturity I'll quickly throw in a photo <laughs> I'll, th I'll throw in a photo right here just to kind of show you. I feel like it loses a lot of the things that I love about the Mexicanum leaf shape once it gets more mature and that leaf really doesn't do anything for me. Luckily for me, it has not sized up that fast and I think it's because I'm literally living in Canada. It's only getting artificial light um, growing indoors. And so I've just had some of these really, really fun leaves that, you know, look like this and I've almost kind of seen it through with this plant. Um, I've got to experience it for a few years now. I've had this plant going on almost four years now. And it, I, I don't know, once it gets any larger than this, I know that it's going to be sort of a downhill, downhill, downhill slide for me um, in terms of my love for it. I think right now it's sort of at its peak of me loving it the most. I feel satisfied in terms of like how far I've come with this plant. I feel satisfied in terms of seeing how much it's grown, seeing it through being a really, really juvenile plant up into what this looks like now. And I know it doesn't really quite look like it, but it's pretty big. It's pretty large. Yeah, I just think it's time to part ways. I feel like I have influence enough people hopefully to get the mexicanum if this is the kind of plant you love if you maybe have a smaller collection or more space and I, know, I feel like this is a breakup i feel like we're like breaking up but i almost feel like it's an amicable amicable breakup and this one i believe so i have a friend who's local who's literally buying like a ton of these plants um and the rest whatever lauren wants to sell she'll sell through either one of her lives or on her website but uh, one of my friends locally is buying this one and I'm so glad that she was interested in it and that she wanted it because at least I can see how it's doing. I know it's going to someone who really cares for their plants and um, I just know that it's going to go to a good home. So I've really, really thought about this. I was like, am I going to regret not even taking a cutting of it? Like maybe I can start over, but I just, I have to be, I have to be practical and um, as much as I do um, love this plant, it's not, I don't feel the same way for it that I feel with like my Tortum or my Florida Beauty. Like those plants are ones that I'm like, those will probably go to the grave with me, those plants. This one is more so just a fun plant that has been fun to grow, fun to watch mature, but yeah, it's the end of the road for us. It's going to a good home. I hope none of you want to cancel me for it. It's a great plant. It really is. It's just I have to be I have to be realistic in who I can keep with me downsizing how many plants I can actually fit into my plant room now. So unfortunately, that's going to be one of them. This one, I'm not so sorry about getting rid of. So I don't know if you guys remember me chopping this on camera in this video. It's already kind of like growing back vigorously. There's like so many new growth points that have woken up and I just know that it's gonna turn into a beast again. This is one of the begonias that I really, really fell in love with in the beginning. Um, when I, so I first owned like a, uh, what is it? Like the angel wing 
begonia the polka dot begonia how come i can't remember the name of it oh begonia ydi oh god yeah you know what i'm talking about and then this is one of the uh i guess oldest begonias that i had in my collection that i acquired and at one point i could have told you this was my favorite plant i just loved it so much and i still really do i and, I, and that's why i've had it up to this point I think it has such a beautiful texture. It has such a beautiful leaf shape, leaf color. There's nothing that I don't like about this plant except for how fast it grows. Gonna get rid of this just because of, I guess, how hard it is to maintain its size. And once I do chop it down, it looks kind of like weird and wonky like this. And it just does not bring me the joy that it used to. And so I just want this plant to go to like a begonia lover. Like I do really enjoy some begonias, but I wouldn't consider myself like a diehard um, begonia fan or begonia collector. So this one unfortunately is gonna go. The next one that is going is my Philodendron Pink Princess. This is the one that I acquired from Plantsum CA. They were very generous in sending me um, a plant that had such great genetics. I actually sent my mom home with the second one that was in that pot. That one also had really cute variegation. I know some people hate on the Pink Princess because of the lack of pink, but I just find these leaves to be very beautiful. I've said before that the leaf color that it has, both in its hardened and emergent leaf, is really just like, it's so unique and it's so beautiful. And I, I don't mind having just these little speckles and splashes of pink, but just again, as it's growing, I'm not sure I see something long-term with us in terms of a relationship. I feel like this is a plant that I probably, even when getting like really nice variegated leaves like this, I just feel like I might get tired of it. And once the leaves start getting like bigger, cause it already is kind of sizing up now, once I've, you know, I've gotten, I've gotten it onto this pole and the leaves have been getting bigger. But again, I'm gonna say this a million times in this segment of the video, just having to be realistic with who I really like versus who I love and who I can literally see going to the grave with me. Um, this 100% would not be one of them. I especially need to limit the amount of climbing plants that I have because that space is gonna be limited by so much now. I do think that this is another one that my friend is buying too. I think I have a list somewhere, but um, yeah, if she does grab this one, it, it's a really, really nice plant. It's already like fully rooted into this pole and has like a good climbing pattern. So it's like a good foundation for getting it nice and big. Um, I do think it could probably use a little bit more light. I had this one, I keep moving this around as it's growing. This leaf right here was grown basically directly under two 24 watt um, Monios bars, the rest were grown under the 10 watt Barinas. And so I don't know if there's a correlation between variegation and light, but maybe it's a coincidence that this one grew under the highest light, but that one is gonna go too. This one is my Alocasia Luca one. I got this, I believe earlier this year, this was not a very, expensive one i think me and alice just picked this up from lauren's shop it was being sold locally it was only a couple bucks um and i've seen some bigger leaves at lauren's shop uh ones with like wider leaves and like longer leaves and it's it's really really beautiful it's really cool and i actually do find this one to be a little bit less maintenance than other allocation in my opinion. I think I have repotted this thing twice now and it never kind of underwent any shock, no root rot or anything in that transition. And this one was a soil to pond transition, so um, it did fairly well. Yeah, overall, it's been a great plant. It's really, really cool, but when I compare it to my other allocation like the Scalprum, the mellow, the Friedek. It doesn't quite compare. And uh, another marker that I've talked about in another video um, to kind of like remind myself of who I love versus who I like or who I love versus who I've just kept around for a long time just because they've been in my collection for a long time. Um, this is one where like when a new leaf comes out, I'm not like peeking to see how big it is, peeking to see what it looks like. It's like when a new leaf is coming, I'm like, oh cool, a new leaf. Whereas like with a plant like my Cupria, like I get really excited to see what it's gonna look like, how much bigger, 
the leaf is gonna be versus the last one. So even though I really like the way this leaf looks, it kind of has everything that I love in an alocasia. This is one that I can 100% admire in other people's collection and not necessarily have on my own. This one is a big one and I don't know how far back I need to go. Okay, so it has like the two biggest inflows too. I really should try and get something so I could just plop it here and talk, but this is my Anthurium Crystal Mag. You can see it's got these two fatty inflows that have come in. A new leaf here that grew up against the wall up on my shelf, but somehow is still looking like so Gorgina. Let's see if I can prop this up because you guys, the heavy breathing, it's not it. I don't know if you can tell in a lot of my videos that I'm just like constantly out of breath. Maybe that's too high now. And it really is just from like talking nonstop for like hours and hours and hours. Okay, so I think that'll work. That'll do donkey, that'll do. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, so Crystal Mag. Um, I love this plant a lot. I've always really admired the Crystal Mag, but I much prefer the Crystallinum over the Crystal Mag. I don't feel like this hybrid really does any more for me than the Crystallinum. And because it's so big, I just, I just need to do away with it. I recently got a plant from Lauren, the Anthurium Crystallinum Silver Special. Um, I'll throw up a photo of Alice's because mine is just like a little tiny baby. But it's just this really, really, really silvery crystallinum. Almost resembles the crystal black, which I also have in my collection. I have a small one I started over from a stump. Having those two, it, it just, for me, it's enough. And I don't feel like I need this plant necessarily. I kept it around for this long, mostly for breeding purposes, just because I find that anything bred with a crystal mag is just super vigorous. But at the same time, I'm like, if I have my crystal black and I have my crystal silver special, I would actually much prefer to cross something with that than the crystal mag. There's a lot of crystal mag hybrids out there and I'm a little bit crystal magged out. So this one is gonna go, I did keep the inflows on it in case whoever bought this wanted to self it because I think the timing is going to be perfect. By the way, th these are two plants that have synced up their cycles and you know communicated that they wanted to do the anthurium sex so i figure let's just keep it they worked so hard to like get that in sync so hopefully the person who buys this is into growing anthurium from seed but yeah i'm not really feeling too bad about getting rid of this one and um, this one's pretty easy for me i i think that if i didn't have my crystal black um i probably would be a little bit more hesitant to get rid of this especially with like how big and and nice it's become but j again just taking up way too much space this one is one that i don't show very often on this channel the last time that i would have featured it is in my notching video this is the one that i did um the notching i think i did it on camera yeah i did it on camera in that video and it's been a while since i kind of updated you on what it looks like it's a bit sad right now because i let it dry out completely in the tent but i can kind of see some new roots forming but i know a lot of the old old roots have died anyway did i even tell you what this is this is the philodendron quillelii round super super cool plant um like once it's really big it is round like it says um it has a very it has a leaf that's very similar in, I guess, texture to the philodendron Rosio catafillum, if you guys have ever felt that leaf. And it's almost like like the perfect combination of like what a Dean McDowell and a Rosio catafillum feel like. Very, very similar. I don't know if that makes sense. But um, again, I have a lot of like pillowy philodendron in my collection already. And there was a point where I was just like, I wanted all of the big pillows. Like I just, I needed to have them all. But now with having my Dean McDowell, that's like nice and big now. I have my Gloriosum, even my Glorious. I know the Glorious isn't like as like pillowy or whatever, but I kind of feel like that itch gets scratched. And I, this is not doing anything at all for me anymore so i have like zero hesitation i know i'm gonna have zero regrets getting rid of this but i do think that this would be good for people who do like the big 
pillowy philodendron and I just want it to go to someone who will appreciate it more than it's been appreciated in this house. I need to take a breather. Whew. I feel like it's getting harder and harder to talk nonstop. Um, it's kind of nice when I do repot and chat. I feel like I'm a little less winded in those because I do cut out a lot of times where I'm just like repotting something and not talking or I like take a pause and I'm just like on my phone for a little bit to kind of catch my breath. But like sometimes these sit down ones where I'm just like going one after another, I'm just like, oh my God, this feels more tiring than when I ran a full marathon. Anyway, the next one on this list is this Hoya Croniana Silver. I acquired this one from my friend Erin not too long ago. It's been probably in my care for a year. I think I got this last Christmas, so, so almost a year now that I've had it. I do love a good silvery plant. You guys know how much I love my silver plants. But now that my Hoya um, Lacunosa mint coin is getting really long and trailing really, really nicely, I just find that the need for both of them is not very necessary. It's not like um, with ancient dumpster Hoyas, I like to have multiple of different kinds, even if they are kind of similar, just because I jive with them a lot more and there are certain features of certain dumpster Hoyas that I love that maybe the other doesn't have. Whereas besides like the little pointed tip, they're, they're super similar. They're very, very similar. Here is the Lacunosa Mint Coin. So it's not as silvery as the Croniana. It has almost like this kind of grayish tint to it, but I kind of like it more. And I like the leaf shape more than the Croniana. Um, I like the variegation of it a lot more than the Croniana. So again, I just like looking at it together, they're so similar that it's just like, I just really don't need two really like big trailing silvery Hoyas. Um, and yeah, I love this one a lot more than this one. So this one is gonna go too. I'm feeling a little bit sad about this one and maybe a bit pre-regretful. Not so much because like I am just insanely in love with these leaves and how they look, but more so because of the sentimental attachment to them. So this is my Philodendron Billy Black or whatever people are calling it right now. I actually got this from my sister. This is one of like the first imported plants she ever owned. And I've always really liked it. And when she got pregnant with Amelia, like she obviously didn't have as much time to take care of her plants. So this is one of the ones that she gave to me. And I've had it ever since. And I don't know, I don't know why, like, it's not that she like loved this plant and she like gave it to me because she cares about me so much. Oh my gosh, it's so windy. My apartment like feels like it's gonna like fall. So yeah, it's not so much that this was like one of her favorites or one of her babies and then she like gifted it to me. She like was truly like, get this out of my house. It's stressing me out. I don't even like it or want it anymore. Um, but I don't know why, like this plant just reminds me of my sister and just kind of like how both of us started on this aeroid, imported aeroid journey together like around the same time in 2019 and it was something that like we bonded over. And I just remember the feeling of like pure excitement that I had for her when I saw that her importer had just like dropped this off at her door as a gift. And um, yeah, I don't know, I feel a bit bad about giving it away or about selling it or just getting rid of it in general. But when I compare this plant to my billies, I just love them so much more. I think it's just, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the, the color of the billy that I like more, the super, super orange petioles. I'm, I don't know. I just, I feel like I've held on to this plant for as long as I have because of the fact that it's had sentimental meaning to me and just when I have to like, again, check myself and think about the plants that I love versus like, this is just one that I, I know I can live without. I think that initial like letting go of it is gonna be a little bit hard for me, but I think many of us kind of get sucked into this cycle of 
like taking a propagation of a plant that we feel a little bit remorseful to get rid of and then once that plant is like a full-size plant again we're like stressed about it you know i was able to purge a lot of plants in the last few weeks and while some of them were a little bit more difficult to get rid of it's like i almost kind of forgotten already who has left this house again not a plant that i would ever take with me to my grave so we're gonna find what this one a new home too i want this thing gone i want it gone gone and out of my life i hate it so much i'm not even gonna bother selling this plant i'm probably just going to give it away to someone who has a terrarium and needs like a filler plant but uh this is the frick uh what is it philodendron bicolor mini purple that i imported two imports ago hate it don't like it don't like it at all um i tried getting it on a pole to see if anything would happen and it's just getting smaller i do think it needs to be like in a terrarium and i'm not I don't know, I just feel like this one wouldn't look good with my maidenhair fern. They don't quite match. So I'm gonna get rid of it. No remorse, don't care. Want it gone, want my pole back, um, and that's that. Uh, the next one quickly is, whoa, my philodendron crystallinum. This, <laughs> um, I'm gonna quit YouTube now. Uh, it's been nice knowing you, bye-bye. This is my Anthurium crystallinum. <laughs> um, this one I've had for a very long time. I acquired this from Lauren, like even way before we were like actual friends. And I liked this one because of like how dark the leaves were and how like almost white the veins were. I've tried to get rid of this plant so many times, but Alice has not let me. But I think she would be okay with me getting rid of it now considering i have the crystallinum silver special and i have my crystal black so yeah i'm gonna be getting rid of this one as well next one is gonna be my monstera obliqua there was a point where i really really loved this and um i think i even like raved about it in maybe a favorites video or i i know i talked about it in a video recently where i was saying like i can't wait till it gets even crustier and like you know holier whatever but it pushed out its first runner for me in ever and it pissed me it pissed me off so much it pissed me off unreasonably that i just was like no you're gone so i chopped the runner off the runner was like a mile long it reminded me it brought back ptsd from when i had my um monstera spruciana which i just could not grow a leaf on for the life of me and i I just want it gone now. <laughs> I did get this um, from a friend. She gifted me a cutting of it and I think it's been really cool to grow up to this point and I'm surprised it even looks the way it looks now. It has not been difficult at all. It's been really, really easy. It's just kind of like living in my EXO. But I told myself the first time that this thing pushed out a runner, I just wasn't doing it, it anymore. I am not dealing with these monsteras that don't want to grow leaves when, when it's, it's already, already on, on a freaking pole. pole. What, what more do you want? want? So this one, this one's gone. Bye. See you later. Next one is my Philodendron Rosio Catafillum, which I mentioned earlier in this video. I think I was comparing it to... Who was I comparing it to? Oh, the, uh, whatchamacall? Whatchamacall? <laughs> can I, can someone cancel me already? Um, who's this guy? The Kulali Rai Round. Yeah, they kind of have the same uh, leaf texture. Very, very similar. Um, the Rosio Catafillum is really, really, really freaking fun. It's such a cool plant. I'm gonna pop in um, a mature photo right now. It really just has everything that I love in a big, leafy philodendron. <laughs> philodendron. Oh my god. Um, it's not quite as pillowy as something like the um, Dean McDowell. It just has a really, really nice leaf shape. It has really, really nice venation. Um, I like how close it is together. I like how um, muted it is. But again, in my other pillowy plants, round philodendron plants, I just don't see the need for this anymore. I also find it very, very slow in sizing up and the process hasn't been as satisfying for me as something like my Gloriosum or my Glorious or something like that. So 
Um, yeah, kind of without remorse, without regret. I am going to get rid of this one, not taking a cutting. Like again, I'm not taking cuttings of any of these plants, not even like the tiniest little sliver. I just want them gone. Um, and I want my pole back, so <laughs> that one's gotta go. Very, very, very quickly, <laughs> this is the Anthurium brownii that I got from Alice. Uh, I think it was earlier this year. We did a joint purge and she was just giving this away for people who were picking up and I don't know, I thought the leaves were really cool. Um, it's got like little Mickey Mouse ears and stuff and a really pointy nose. And I don't know, I just find it to be really, um, yeah, it's really cute. And I told her, I was like, this is probably not a plant that I'm gonna keep long term. I kind of just wanna like experience it for a little, see how it is to grow. And now that I've kind of gotten it out of my system, I think it's time to just uh, rehome it. The growth pattern is a little weird. I was like, okay, maybe I can just like chop it, maybe like propagate them from little plants, but the nodes are stacked so tight, there's no way that I can chop. So this one's gonna have to be sold <laughs> like this or given away like this. I'm not quite sure. I might actually just, um, if I can sell it, I think I'll give the profits to Alice or if she's okay with me just giving it away, that's probably what I'll do. But yeah, it's just taking up so much space and it's in this really like nice vessel that I thrifted and I just want it back. Also, look at all the little mold things growing in it. I've actually found that the um, this kind of mold that grows in your substrate, why are these leaves squeaking? I find that that kind of mold grows in darker conditions. So any plant that is not really getting a ton of light from a grow light or is not in like near any kind of window and that kind of tracks because that one was on top of my rudsta in my plant room and was not getting any light at all. <laughs> it was literally just getting like the cast from whatever was bouncing off the walls. So I'm really not surprised that there's that much mold in the um in the plant but it's you know it's harmless it's not affected it at all but yeah anyway that plant's way too big gotta get rid of it next one is this snake plant that has been living in my hallway for two years now i think it's two years it was not this large when i got it all of this here is brand new um really does not require much but I have moved something else into the hallway now and I just don't really need this anymore. This one was more so a filler plant and I do not need to fill it anymore. So his duty is done. Um, I was actually thinking of maybe donating this to like a local care home or something. I don't really want to give it away to just anyone and I don't want to throw it away. I don't think that I'll be able to sell this just because no one's really buying these kinds of plants anymore. Um, but along with, I was going to save this for later, but I'm also getting rid of my Euphorbia trigona. I know some of you are going to be disappointed in me as well, but um, that is, I was, I had that for sale on Marketplace. I tried to sell it in my local Facebook group. I think a lot of people can't house such a big um, plant, especially one with a lot of spikes and stuff. So I do think that I'm gonna find somewhere to donate it that can take it. Um, and my initial thought is just a care home just because I feel like it would, I, I feel like care homes tend to take things like that just as like um, something to like spruce up the place, like just bring more life to it and stuff. So I think this will be a good one to donate and then also that one if they'll take it. Next on the chopping block is this Philodendron Tenu. I feel like some of you guys are probably like super confused as to why I'm like violently purging and like getting rid of plants that I've been trying so hard to size up. And again, it's just this mood that I'm in and maybe I'll regret it down the line, but I just don't see myself really mourning the loss of this one. It's been fun to see how much it can grow and how large the leaf has become from being like super, super tiny. But I don't know. I have so many other climbing philodendron in this apartment that I love so much more. I think that I have been holding on to this more for experimental purposes, documentation purposes, just to kind of show you guys the progression of growth. And I don't know. I feel like I've kind of showed enough. You know, I, I'm not 
really aiming to grow my plants like as big as they grow in the wild that's just not a realistic expectation for me maybe there are like one or two plants that i'd love to see if i can grow it super super large but again it's just not sustainable to have such a large aeroid in such a small space this is taking up a lot of space because of the fact it never drops any leaves and um, the leaves are getting a lot bigger and i think it's just now um, has kind of a good foundation in terms of giving it to someone who wants to see it grow to its fullest potential and maybe whoever does um, get this one will keep me in the loop and show me how much bigger it's getting so yeah as much as i want my pole back it's already like super established on here so i think i'm just going to um, get my vessel back but keep it on the pole for whoever is going to adopt this one. This one has the wingspan of a freaking helicopter. But this is another one that I acquired from Erin around the same time that I got the Hoya Croniana Silver. And uh, what other plant did I get from her at the same time? I feel like I was just talking about it. Anyway, I got a bunch of plants from her. This was one of them. It surely was not this big when I got it. And it's something that I'm just like, am I gonna regret it? Am I? Am I? But it's just too much, you guys. Um, I think it would be different if I had like a sunroom or something or I don't know, greenhouse attached to my house or something where I can really just like let this one flourish and, and grow like wild. But truly it's kind of like outgrown every space that I've put it in. It used to be in my window hanging um, from one of the plant hangers that I got from, prop not Propagation Diaries, from um, the Variegated Plant Shop, but these little arms were growing so large that it was starting to cover the TV, so I had to remove it, tried putting it in my bedroom. Every time Vince walked by, it would just like slap him in the face. So it's just gotten, it's just gotten to be a little bit too much. And uh, again, going back to like realistic standards of what I can fit in this house, I, I just don't think this has a place anymore. Sorry, Alice is texting me. Um, I just don't think this has a place anymore and I would much rather see it go to someone who can actually accommodate it for like how big it's grown and um, really love on it. So this is also gonna be um, saying it's goodbyes in this house. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna like maybe chop and try and sell it as like two separate plants. Like I'll sell like this guy and then maybe take this cutting and this cutting and sell it as just like another plant or if i should just sell it like this because it is really really big and nice now um those are things that we're gonna have to decide together this week i feel like some of you guys are gonna unfollow me after this but i'm getting rid of my ripsala salicornioids i know that um this one has held a special place in my heart for a long time I do think it's one of the coolest Ripsalis ever, but I'm not sure if it's because I like always have the AC on in this house or temperatures are too low or whatever, but it's so messy. It's gotten to be so messy. Let me show you guys what I'm dealing with all the time with this plant, because it was over on the floor and I'm just gonna show you what it does, please ignore the dirty floors and my hair on the ground. My apartment is filthy, but um, you can see that it just drops its little leaves so often. And I always have, I always have just like a pool of them on the floor and I just, I can't deal with it anymore. I think that it has to go to someone that like has the warmth for it. Um, has the space for it and the sun for it because right now I'm just kind of trying to fit it anywhere that I possibly can I am considering taking a cutting of this plant just because it's it's not like I hate it This is seriously one of my favorite um, Ripsalis ever someone actually told me Recently that this wasn't a Ripsalis and it was something else Can't remember um, But yeah, there's a good chance. I might just take a little snip like take something like this off the top stick it in some water and just like i don't know put it on my bedside table or like put it in the kitchen or something i think i can much i can handle a smaller plant that's dropping a lot less of these leaves rather than um this big old thing like i can already see where another one is gonna fall like it's just constantly all the time it never stops so this one is i'm getting rid of it is that cilantro 
just it's just road grass just some road grass so i would say of all of the plants that have been on this roster this is the one that i'm the saddest about but i just i can't i can't do it anymore the constant vacuuming sweeping up the leaves i just can't do it again unfortunately another one that is going to be leaving us third to last one is this summer glory i love this plant a lot um i really don't care that it's taken up so much real estate in my plant room because of how much i love it this is the new leaf on it Ugh. It is getting so so big and beautiful but um, I already have another one so I have my original one from my friend Krista that is probably the leaves are about maybe this size now a little bit smaller than that so it's it's getting there it's gonna look like this in no time at the rate that it's growing but the reason I'm getting rid of it is because I just don't need a double of it the other one is gonna be large enough at some point to chop and propagate in case I do need a backup. Um, Lauren at North Shore has been wanting one of these for the longest time and I just, I don't know, I'm like, why do I have two of them when she has zero? It just seems wrong. She's always like fulfilling wishlist plants for me and she's always so generous with, you know, her hybrids and her seedlings and stuff that, yeah, I just wanna give this to her. I don't know if it actually can be chopped. Um, it's quite, tight in terms of the the in, internode spacing but i told her she can take a cutting of it like she can take the top cutting but like i'm almost inclined to give her the whole thing i'm just not sure if this is like almost too big for her because she is trying to like make space in the shop for so many of her plants that are like growing rapidly so i don't know maybe she could just like chop off some of these bottom leaves and just have some of the newer leaves on it but either way i'm just glad that it's going to someone that i see often it's going to a good friend and i know that she's gonna really enjoy this and um, hopefully that means that you know she can take some props and sell them within canada because i don't know why we don't have summer glory i feel like you can find summer glory everywhere in the states and maybe it's just a matter of time before it hits canada but they're like nowhere to be found here unless you buy them from like a small shop. Uh, but anyway, rambling. This is one that I am also getting rid of. I'm just not feeling as sad about it because I know where it's going and I know it's gonna go somewhere good. Second to last one is this random little guy who looks like one of those, um, what is it? Those like balloon, not balloon, those inflatable arm guys like at the car dealerships and stuff i don't even know what this is called i think it's some kind of maybe euphorbia or something it's grown so much it used to just be this tiny little stump it was basically just this when i first got it and it has just exploded with growth it's been living in no drainage um kind of goes against everything that people say how to not grow it i've grown it in high humidity grown it in a cabinet just for aesthetic reasons not for like humidity reasons but um yeah it just won't stop it won't stop and uh the reason that i'm getting rid of it is because i just don't i don't know it's one of those things again where i'm like it's growing but it's not like i'm i'm super excited about how much it's grown i'm not i'm not gonna like put this in my will to bury it with me or anything by the way i want to be cremated i don't want to be buried i don't know why i keep saying that uh it's been a fun ride well you know we've been on it together but i just i just don't i just don't see the need for it anymore so it's gonna go um and then the last one i'm actually not going to bring it over here because of the size but i will take you over there with my phone all right so the last one that i'll be getting rid of is this big florida green some of you guys might remember it from the dedicated video i did on it when i repotted it it was already a good sized plant but it certainly was not this tall um it has grown quite a bit it's beautiful and it's been so easy like it's literally just climbing this stake and it doesn't really need much to size up but it's just i, I don't really see the long-term plan with it like obviously it would be pretty cool if i can get it to grow like super super high but i feel like with this little corner here it's a bit of an overkill i feel like i don't necessarily need like this whole thing to just be covered with plants i do really like to see the exposed brick still so 
I don't know who's gonna want to take this um, or who even has the space for it. I really don't feel like chopping and propagating it. So I'm gonna try and sell it as it is. As far as I know, that is it in terms of the plants that I'm gonna be getting rid of. I thought that I would be extremely tired after filming this. I think I've been filming for like an hour and a half already, but I, I feel like I still have a bit of steam left in me. So what I'm gonna be doing is starting to unpot maybe the ones that, hmm, wait. Yeah, okay, maybe I'll start unpotting the ones that my friend is buying. Um, I'm going to be pest treating again, washing everything down and I can at least get her plants ready and take some of my vessels back. My plant room is <laughs> its a hot mess right now. As you guys can tell, I've just been like pulling plants like crazy. So it, yeah, it, it's not even like workable in there. I can't even like step into it. It's so wild. So I'm gonna try and do a little setup down here and hopefully I can make it work. Um, we'll just repot a little bit. Like I said, I'm going to show you the plant that I'm gonna be sending to a friend. I also have a corn from Alice that she's sending to the same friend, so we'll get that packaged up. And yeah, that's it. Break. So, um, Jing, I still, <laughs> I still have your, your little basket thing. I will give it back. I promise. So I'm gonna just start unpotting. So my friend actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She got nine plants from me. She said she might wanna get more. I've basically just given her first dibs on anything that she wants just cause it's easier for me to just, you know, um, give it to her, sell it to her. So um, I'm gonna just get these prepped. I bought some of these cups from the dollar store. They're not as big as I wanted, but this was the biggest size that they had. They're still pretty small. So I'll, I'll be able to fit things like this and maybe the pink princess in. Um, but the rest of them I'm gonna have to find bigger containers. Anyway, so I think my first plan of attack, oh my God, I'm not gonna make the same mistake. So in my last video, I think I was like, I know I wasn't hitting the tripod, but I think I might've been hitting the cord and I am not making that mistake again because I almost threw up editing that video. I was so dizzy and I'm so, so sorry about that you guys um so i am not making the same mistake the table does shake quite a bit but as long as this camera is not shaking that's fine so anyway um i think i'm going to start by just removing everything from its substrate and then i just want to like toss them into the shower and just give them like a rinse and then also a spray with my alcohol spray and then on top of that i'm going to try and individually wipe each leaf down as well so i'm going to just start with this Obliqua and while we are sitting here and Repotting there was actually a question that I missed in my last repot and chat Q&A And that's because the question came in as a DM and not as a response to my question box So I am sliding around <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, it's a good question And I do think that I can talk a little bit about it in depth have there been any changes to your lifestyle slash motivation with houseplants over the years? What were those changes? And do you think there's a possibility that you'll leave the houseplant hobby sometime in the future? Um, I wanna make sure that I answer every part of that question. So have there been any changes to your lifestyle? That's where I'm gonna start. I, I don't think I'm gonna go all the way back to when I first started um, caring for houseplants because Back when I first started, um, this was like in 2000, how come I can never remember? 2016, no, 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 that's not right. More like 2012. I really actually, I wouldn't even say collecting. I was just, I had houseplants and I was taking care of them, um, but it wasn't, It. I would not consider it uh, collecting nor would I have even considered it like a hobby at that point it was just something that like I had around and you know I liked seeing it in my space but it definitely was not a collection at all I want to say that the actual collecting didn't start until I moved here to Canada in 2017 um, the reason that I started 
collecting house plants and really bringing a lot home at a time was because I had my first place here with my husband. Whoa. And it was like the first time that I had kind of like my own space with a partner and like a really like nice space at that. Like I have lived with a boyfriend before, but like we were literally living like in his mom's house. So it really wasn't like our space. And when I had like my own place prior to like 2012, I wasn't super into plants, nor was I really into like decorate like interior design either like I kind of just looked at my apartment as a place to sleep and eat and shower so 2017 was like the first time where I was like I want like a nice space this is gonna be my oasis and I really got into like interior design and I just thought that having plants as like a main I guess decorative aspect um, or design element was it, it just appealed to me way more than it ever had before so I was bringing home like a lot of plants from big box stores um, I would go shopping like every week just to see what I could find and yeah I was bringing a lot home but back then I was working full-time for the toxic workplace that I talked about in um, Alice's video. We did a collab where we kind of talked about, you know, toxic work environments and why we left our old job. Sorry, Pudge is snoring. I was really busy at the time and I, I wasn't, I was working from home, but my schedule was just like jam packed. And so I brought enough home to like sort of keep me busy on the weekends and stuff in terms of watering and plant care, but it, it was nothing like what it is now for sure. It really wasn't until I moved into this building, not specifically this unit. I was living down the, sh down the hall and as you guys might know, like I've got like floor to ceiling windows like everywhere and I just felt really like lucky to have found a space that would accommodate my plant so well. And it almost felt like a crime to not utilize it. And so that's when I kind of went like crazy on the plants. Like all I wanted to do was bring new plants home. And, um, you know, I was dedicating basically any free moment possible to caring for plants. And um, again, I was still back then working for my old, my old boss. But by then things had started kind of slowing down a little bit. And so I had more time to like scour marketplace and like, find heirloom plants and find i was really into like the big big plants i i didn't have a lot of interest in like taking home little tiny plants like i wanted the big guys i wanted the big monsteras i wanted the big rubber trees the bigger the better and i was spending a lot of time trying to find um you know these plants on on marketplace and craigslist and stuff yeah in terms of like my lifestyle that's where i was 2020 hit and by then I had already amassed a pretty sizable collection both in terms of store-bought plants and then also getting into like imported plants so by then I think in 2020 that's when my collection was at its largest maybe not in terms of the quantity of plants like I have now but like I had I had a good size amount of plants or I had a good number of plants but I had huge plants like like I said over the last year or two or whatever I had just been wanting to like buy big plants and so that was the year that introduced me to thrips I had never seen a thrip before 2020 I didn't know what it was I didn't know the damage that it could do I just really chalked up everything to like fertilizer or water or you know root health or something like pests weren't even on my radar like I had dealt with spider mites but not really that bad and yeah so thrips came into my life depression came into my life 2020 and 2021 were probably the worst years in terms of mental health so my lifestyle changed quite a bit in terms of even having, again, like the second part of this question asked, like the motivation to care for plants. My lifestyle went from like having like a pretty good work life balance of, you know, working my nine to five and then having enough time to 
care for the plants, but also spend time with my husband and spend time with friends. And then it just drastically changed to me not really being able to care for my plants and not even really being able to care for myself. And um, in 2020, 2021, a lot of my plants died. And I don't think I would have even mentioned this on YouTube in the beginning because I, I wasn't as trans transparent as I am now on YouTube. I was still kind of like getting my getting my bearings and getting comfortable and like I don't know it was still like a very very new thing to me so when i when i first started my youtube channel you would have seen a lot of plants that were kind of coming out of nearly dying in 2020 when i really was not able to take care of my plants and a lot of them were just like brand new plants i just like started over because i i chucked out a lot of plants that died during that bad mental health spell it, it kind of yeah it was just my opportunity to start over i guess definitely with adding youtube into my life um i just realized how happy these roots are in this pole look at this i don't know if you can see it with the glare but it is super rooted in there um anyway uh when i started on youtube it definitely threw not a wrench but it changed it changed a lot of things for me in terms of my lifestyle and my relationship with plants um in the beginning in 2021 i didn't really see youtube as like a career it was more so as i i saw it as sort of an extension to my my instagram because i had been in my stories a lot oh sorry um I had been in my stories a lot talking about plants, talking about plant care, and I don't know, it was just like really kind of difficult to do tutorials or like Q and A's about, you know, no drainage and pest treatments, whatever. And I just felt like if I could have a YouTube channel where I just like refer everyone to, like through Instagram in terms of answering their questions, that would be so much easier for me. But then it kind of like turned into something that I was pretty surprised about. I, I really didn't expect the channel to grow the way that it did. Granted, I'm not like a huge channel, but I'm certainly, I certainly have way more subscribers now than I ever thought I would have ever. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to, it's like giving birth. It's really root bound in here. I haven't repotted this thing in, in quite a while and I'm just really hoping that these plants don't go into shock when um, I'm doing the treatment, but I really need my vessels back. Vessels are getting so expensive at the thrift store and just like anywhere in general. And so I've run quite low on it because I've, I've been kind of stingy and not wanting to like pay the amounts that they are. So anyway, um, essentially 2022 was the year that I decided that I was going to try and make something of this youtube channel and really do something with it and just kind of run with it you know i never thought that it would turn into like basically a part of my career or would generate me enough revenue that i could justify the amount of time that i was spending on these videos so with the youtube channel though i feel i feel like my well, for one, my lifestyle changed like 180 degrees. Like uh, I, it's 180. It became more than just a hobby. It became my job too. And from the beginning, when I told myself that I really was gonna try and make something of this channel, I said that I didn't want to, I didn't want to taint this hobby. I didn't want to hate it because it was work now. And that I would draw a clear line between what i would share on youtube and also make sure that i still had like these moments to myself with my plants and i know it seems kind of like silly to say it out loud but i i think that if like a lot of us in this hobby can reflect on some of the times we've been kind of the most at peace or like feeling like 
the most fulfilled it, it is those like quiet moments that we have with our plants when it's just us we're not sharing it on socials we're not filming anything it's just you know we're sitting on the floor and we're like admiring a new leaf that just emerged or we're admiring like nice juicy roots that are in a pole that you just set up like it's it's those little moments that like really really remind me how much i i genuinely love this hobby and i'm not just doing it like for the money or whatever so yeah like that was important to me to make sure that i kind of drew a line between work plants and like hobby plants i don't know if that makes sense at all but i essentially just i, I didn't want every moment with my plants to be for content or for something i still wanted to have those like special moments with my plants that were just for just for me or just for us um and so yeah the obviously the lifestyle my lifestyle has changed so much since the beginning of when i started really really collecting these imported aeroids but i think no matter how much my lifestyle has changed no matter how many things have changed in my life no matter how bad or good my mental health has gotten plants have always kind of been there for me and with me and i guess yeah to answer that second part of the question i i really don't i don't know that i could ever see myself leaving this hobby permanently for good because i don't know what else i'd be doing like i've told you guys before like i don't have any other hobbies besides this there's nothing that i feel as passionate about than this um i i like to do other things on the side like paint and like art things and arts and crafts and diy projects but i wouldn't necessarily call that a passion just like something that kind of keeps me busy sometimes or something that i just like to do sometimes but like if you told me that i could never pick up a paintbrush again and paint it would not be the end of the world for me i'd just be like well that i mean that sucks but you know i'll live but if someone told me like you can never have a plant in your house again that would feel that would feel like the end of the world for me no joke i think something that i can speak to even more is um the motivation more so than the lifestyle um because my my lifestyle hasn't changed so drastically I'm just gonna leave it for now. I don't wanna. If it's my package, it can just wait. Anywho, going back to the motivation part of it. Um, yeah, like I said, sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. My lifestyle hasn't changed so much. You know, I've always just had a job, my husband, me, Pudge, um, no major like life curves, no, ma no major curve balls that have really really changed my lifestyle a whole lot um, if anything my lifestyle has accommodated for more time with plants than anything which i'm super grateful for um, but my motivation <laughs> all over the place it is all over the place um, you know i talked a little bit about mental health and my you know dealing with anxiety and depression back in 2020 and a lot of a lot of that was really stemmed from um well childhood trauma but um the you know the scare of covid i i was just so afraid that this like like obviously nothing like this has ever happened in our generation's lifetime you know like living through a freaking pandemic and gosh there's so much moss in here i was just afraid i was like deathly afraid i hated that i was so far away from my family you know there was so much information out there about the virus and i was just seriously i was like at any moment one of us is just gonna drop dead like it's gonna be me or it's gonna be vince and i'm gonna be alone it's gonna be one of my family members i was thinking about my grandparents and i was just like spiraling because you know they stopped travel you couldn't cross the border and i was i was just stuck here i couldn't be with my family even if i wanted to be and i was so scared that 
if someone caught COVID and like didn't survive from it, I wouldn't be able to say goodbye. I wouldn't be able to be there. So I had so, like I was crippled with anxiety, crippled with it. And that's when I started medication, started seeing my, my therapist more regularly. And uh, yeah, when that happened, my plants tanked. Um, it wasn't even just like the, uh, the plant care, like in terms of watering and whatever that was really taking a toll on the plants. It was the pests. I was I had pests at the time. At some point, I had both um, thrips and spider mites. It was more so thrips than spider mites, and it just ran rampant throughout the entire collection. And every single day that I would wake up, there would be a new plant that was dying or dead. And it was to the point where like a plant would be completely dead, like crispy. Like if you crunched it, it would turn to ashes. And I just couldn't even get myself to like freaking walk over there and throw it out. Like I just left it. It was almost like I was like wanting to be surrounded by by the death. I, I don't know, it's very, it's a really weird time in my life. But besides mental health issues, I think even now I would say I'm probably in the best mental state I've been in a very, very, very long time. Um, which I'm super grateful for and happy about. But even then, sorry, I feel like this white backdrop, like this area here is making the white balance go crazy, but I don't, I don't really wanna move it now, do I? No. Okay, so um, yeah, I would say even when my mental health is good and I don't really have a whole lot to be anxious about, I still, get into into moods where i'm just like i don't want to do anything i don't want to take care of my plants i don't want to see my plants like a new you know leaf will be coming out even if it's like a favorite plant and i'm like don't care don't care don't want to don't want to see it and there was a point recently where um you know everything kind of seemed fine and dandy on youtube probably but like i hadn't gone in my tent because i had no motivation to to clean it out and everything was dying in there but it was like ignorance is bliss. Keep it zipped up, don't look at it. It's like it's not happening. And I just, I go through periods of, of time like that where I just wanna like do nothing. Like I'll work, pay my bills, and, and that's it. Like at the end of the day, I just wanna like sit on the couch and watch TV or just like shamelessly scroll TikTok and just, I don't know, go online and do nothing and just be useless. I get into moods like that a lot. And um, when that happens, of course, yeah, the plants, you know, they, it, it takes a toll on them. Um, but I, I don't know, I don't really freak out the way that I used to freak out. I've just sort of understood that like my moods and my motivation will always like ebb and flow. And I don't think that it's like realistic to always set such a high expectation for yourself in this hobby, just because of the nature of it. Like we are dealing with like living things, you know, and it is a lot of work. It's a lot of freaking work, especially when you have as many houseplants as we do, which is another big reason why I want to downsize it's you know i just want i kind of want like my space back i kind of want my time back and i i just i think that like the time i'm spending caring for plants it's just a little bit too much it's just a little too much plus with like now you know not now but obviously being on youtube and and doing this for a job it's just it's just a lot and so if I can have less plants and more space back and actually have like a nice like guest room where like my family can stay when they're here, to me that also, that almost makes me happier than just having like an apartment filled with plants. I think that it kind of takes a while to like understand where you kind of fall on the spectrum of things, especially if you have like a family, right? Like if you're taking care of kids and stuff, I don't, I don't know how people do it. Like whenever I'm babysitting my niece and nephew or babysitting my two nephews, um, I can't, I can barely just like go to the bathroom. 
without like something happening you know it's like i don't have my phone on me like i have to be very present and yeah uh when i was caring for my sister's plants while i was visiting or i would you know watch my sister care for her plants it happens like very very late at night with whatever energy she has left and it's not it's not like a sit down and like really look at my plant it's like who is on its last leg who needs water desperately like tell me who that's what i'm gonna do and then i'm gonna walk away and i'm gonna kick my feet up so you know it all just depends like what your lifestyle is what your family dynamic is how much time you even have to spend in the hobby and right now i kind of have all the time in the world like my my job now really is plants and um i'm grateful for it but even then even with being able to spend that much time caring for plants i don't really want to like i want to have more time to just have a day off take a weekend off or i don't know like sit down and like read a book not just like read a couple chapters but like dedicate like days to just like finishing a book you know i haven't done that in so long and the least common denominator are my plants like i just spend so much time caring for plants that it really doesn't allow time for anything else and i don't really want to look back you know on my deathbed and think did did that take too much time did that take too much of my time should i have spent more time with friends should i have stayed a little bit longer in california because really the only reason i can be gone for like only two weeks max is my plants i have the the luxury and i'm i'm grateful that i can be gone for as long as i want to because i make my own schedule you know but truly the only reason that i cannot be gone for more than that is because of my plants i'm lucky that i have friends who can take care of my plants while i'm gone but obviously i'm not going to expect the, for them to come here for like a month or whatever um i i want to be gone only for a reasonable amount of time um i would never expect someone to care for my plants longer than i would honestly want to care for their plants so yeah it's like maybe if i did have less plants i could go on longer vacations i could spend more time with my family and those are just like all things that i've kind of thought of you know and again it it ebbs and flows right like you you i think you've all seen me through periods of like too many plants i don't want to do this i'm going to get rid of a bunch of plants and then a few months later huge import haul like the the nature of this hobby is just so so strange but i think that something i'm learning as i'm getting more into it um and have more years under my belt is that i really am able to kind of separate the feeling of chasing that high chasing the serotonin of bringing home a new plant and then bringing home quality plants that i know i'll want for a long period of time and getting that serotonin boost in other areas of my life or in different ways in this hobby so yeah this crystal had a little bit of um i wouldn't say root rot it's just they look like the old roots so i just cleaned it up a bit it still has a nice decent root system the last one i need to unpot is this freaking tenu i was thinking of like chopping off some lower leaves to make it easier to like repot into a new plant or for her to bring it home or fit it but I don't really want that to be my call. I'll let her make that decision. So anyway, yeah, it, you know, things have certainly changed over the years in terms of motivation and goals in this hobby. And, you know, with YouTube, it just changes it a whole lot because now I, I almost feel sort of obligated to keep certain plants or keep a decent amount of number of plants because then if I only had like 20 plants in my collection, like what would I be doing on YouTube, you know? I think it's a pretty common theme and I'm sure I'm not the only one who experiences this with like my local Facebook group, but it seems like everybody kind of readjusts their collections based on what's going on in their life. Um, whether it's like someone 
got pregnant and now they need that extra bedroom or got a new puppy i don't i i can't have plants on the floor anymore and i need more time to to care for my puppy i, I have to get rid of a bunch of plants or something like it seems like the process of purging plants and then bringing plants home it's something that we all kind of experience on different levels and it's something that's pretty common and so i know that there are some people who have said that they felt like shame almost or like embarrassment in wanting to downsize their collection either because like they couldn't keep up with the pests or they just felt like they just weren't as good as at growing plants as they thought they would be or you know they thought that they could care for a certain type of plant and it ended up being a lot harder i don't know it just to me it's like it's only embarrassing if you're like trying to prove yourself to someone which you really shouldn't be because then otherwise it wouldn't be a hobby like you're just doing it for what recognition or what's that word i'm thinking of approval i feel like it should be up to you at any given point whether you want to have a ton of plants or you just want to have like a handful and if it changes all the time i don't think that there's any shame in that like i don't think you should be embarrassed about it but it can be a little bit chaotic because i've certainly experienced that through the years and it's yeah it's it feels it feels really chaotic to like be on this like collecting binge and then all of a sudden be like super stressed out because there's too many now and you're like why did i just why did i do that to myself why did i spend all that money like why am i so impulsive why am i being so manic right now um but i think it takes some time to find like that happy medium for you i'm not sure if i'll ever find like that perfect number for me or like the right amount of plants for me i think it's something that's always going to change but i think as long as you're constantly checking yourself and make sure making sure you're checking in with yourself too um i think that that's super helpful um anyway i have unpotted pretty much i think all of the plants she's gonna get i feel like i'm missing one why does it feel like the missing one? Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go chuck these in the shower, give them a good rinse down, and then um, I'll let them soak in there for a while and then we'll move on to the next thing. This is the plant I will be chopping to send to a friend. Um, I've mentioned this before. The Dioscoria is a plant that you share. You don't hoard this plant. It grows so fast that there's no reason to hoard it because by the time the cuttings get to your friends, it will already have grown back to the size it was before. Um, so I don't know how many cuttings I wanna take for her. Honestly, you guys, I'm sort of, <laughs> this plant almost made this list this week in terms of plants that I was gonna purge because I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I do get stressed out by this plant quite a bit. Um, I, I get stressed out about its growth pattern and some people just grow it so nicely and then some people don't. And I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm gonna chop Sorry, I'm not doing anything in front of the camera. I'm gonna chop down here, I think. Oh, I just cut off a part of a leaf. Oh, oops, my bad. Uh, oh my gosh, there's so much up here. I'm gonna send her more than she needs because then at least she can share it with her friends over on the East Coast. Ooh, I'll send her this really silvery, this really silvery leaf. This one grew like directly under um, a barina and it's like, way different than any other leaf i've grown um so i'll cut this too i don't know if the plant is going to get super disrupted by being chopped when new leaves are coming out but there will never be a time that there's not a new leaf on this thing there's always a new leaf that's just how it works 
before I get this packaged up, I'm going to um, wipe down each leaf. So I think I'm gonna cut them into like single and double nodes. I think it'll be easier to send them that way. So like that and I guess like that. Look at this guy, he's just like completely wrapped around himself. <gasps> what you doing, buddy? This leaf is so stinking cute. Sorry, I'm so far, y'all. I feel like she's gonna be so confused as to why there's so much in this package. Oops. And actually, I probably shouldn't send more than I can fit into the cup that I'm putting it in. Hmm. <laughs> I do want to send her this really silvery one. I actually want to send her all of it. We're going to make it work. We're going to make it fit. Okay. Um, but I first want to just get it pest treated. I haven't really noticed any like pest issues with this plant, which is kind of weird. Like I would think that this one would just be like overtaken by spider mites, but it hasn't been. So that's been kind of nice. Um, oh, and something that I think that we can talk about is the spider mite treatment. So I've been using the 70% isopropyl alcohol on um, my spider mite plants. And I've been mixing it with, obviously would have seen the cast oil soap, the tea tree and peppermint cast oil soap. And um, I've really liked it so far. It has worked so much better, honestly, than just using um, regular uh, pest sprays weekly, I've found that the switching back and forth between this and then doing something like spider mite knockout or something with perethrin, is it perethrin or perethrins? Perethrins? Uh, kind of switching back uh, between those two has been seriously a godsend for keeping the spider mite infestation kind of at a low lately. We have been using 90%, 99% isopropyl alcohol at North Shore Tropicals to treat and prevent for pests there. And I've, you know, had a bit of experience with it now. And here are some of my observations. So I posted it on my Instagram and I had some mixed thoughts. I had some people saying like, probably not gonna work as good as 70% because it's gonna evaporate too fast and um, you know, it's gonna burn the leaves. So talking about evaporation, um, I'm not really worried about that. If anything, I kind of do want it to evaporate really fast because I have found that in stronger dilution amounts where I'm not using as much water or soap and I'm just using like, sh like basically the straight alcohol, I do get a bit more damage on the leaf, even on non-emergent leaves, like leaves that are just completely hardened off. And so when it evaporates faster, it actually, it, it, it almost works better for the plant because it's not just sitting on there for a long period of time, especially if you're treating and you're just spraying like in a greenhouse and your lights are still on, like it is gonna burn the crap out of those leaves, especially an emergent leaf. So you wanna be careful. Um, and I've had the same burn with 70%. I haven't really noticed that much of a difference with the 99% in terms of leaves like not reacting well to it. But I will say that it it's just kind of made me have to do a lot less treatments with the 99%. I have found that it just kind of like get it gets rid of it pretty much right away. Um, I was using 99% again at North Shore Tropicals and um, I want to say it was more in like the beginning of summer or maybe at the end of spring or something and I picked up a bottle of it when I was when I saw it at the shop and uh, Lauren told me that you can get it at the dollar store and I was mainly using it for mealybugs and nothing else really I, I, I don't know I actually like it more now because it seems like the pests go away a lot faster. The active pests die a lot faster than just using the 70%. And the evaporation rate for me is not anything that I see as a negative thing. Did I do this one already? 
Did I do this one already? <laughs> I guess I could smell it. Yeah, I did that one. Did that one too, okay. So anyway, uh, yeah, check your dollar store if you can find 99%. Just do maybe about two tablespoons into this size bottle. Um, do like maybe one, t one teaspoon of the peppermint cast aisle soap, one teaspoon of the uh, tea tree cast aisle soap. You don't wanna do too much of the cast aisle soap. I kind of overdid it a little bit and I don't know, I didn't really like it that much. And then fill the rest of the bottle with water and you'll have your secret con secret concoction. I wish that I had been doing this a lot sooner and not just using it for mealybugs because I, yeah, I was spraying preventatively in the Hoya cabinet with the alcohol, um, never mixed with the, the tea tree and peppermint soap, but oh my gosh, I love doing it because it makes everything smell so good. Like, like now I kind of get this like, residue or this hint of like tea tree oil the tea tree oil seems to be a little bit stronger in terms of smell residual smell but it's nice to like open up my tent and smell like tea tree instead of like chemicals you know um so i much prefer to to do this now than just straight chemicals all the time i thought that i was being smart about just going with like the hard stuff right away. I'm like, oh, screw the all natural stuff. There's no way that that's gonna be any better than the chemicals, but I have been so surprised. I just feel like I owe my life to the person that recommended doing this, this combination. You've changed my life. Now we're just gonna, we are going to pray that <laughs> they don't get immune to it, which is why I still keep going back and forth between this and different other kinds of chemical pesticides because I just want to like keep them on their toes, you know, you never know. So I'm going to do moss and I'm going to do the two cup method. Hopefully I can find a box to fit this in perfectly. I don't, I don't know if Lauren will have a box. I feel like I'm going to need to like, I think her biggest box is going to be like way, or her smallest box is going to be way too big. She's gonna get some pudge hairs with this package for sure. So I'm gonna just put it in moss and um, just make sure that when I seal it up that it's like kind of like really damp because I feel like these things don't ship well when they're unrooted. And I'm hoping it doesn't turn to spinach. Um, I am gonna try and ship it as fast as possible in terms of like the shipping speed. But I am a little bit worried because some of you guys know that I sent some Dioscoria to Fern a while back and like it almost died. <laughs> Luckily she was able to save it, but I kind of had a bad feeling about shipping it. And here I am trying again, but I think that um, this dome will definitely help a bit. Okay, this is too long. It's like, I, I don't want it to be like too wet, but then at the same time, I don't want it to be so dry that there's like no humidity in this thing. And I would like wait to send her rooted cuttings, but the temperatures are dropping pretty fast here in Canada now. And I think it's even colder where she is. So I wanted to get this out this week. So we're just gonna say a little prayer and hope that these little guys make it. I'm almost wondering if I should stick. I think I'm gonna do that. So this is a corm from Alice. It's an alocasia sandariana, sandariana. I don't know if you guys know what that is. She calls it the Rocco's Modern Life alocasia and I would say it's a pretty accurate, pretty accurate name or description for the plant. It does look very Rocco's modern life-ish. It's really, really cute. I'm gonna just, I think, stick this at the top like this so that it's all in there together. But I feel like I need like stronger tape than this. Okay, I'm gonna go like this. 
I think that it'll fit, yeah. And then I'm gonna tape it again. This is gonna be so annoying to unpackage, but you know, my priority is that it gets there safely. Okay, there's a dog hair. It's not, it's not coming out. So you're just gonna have to keep it, sorry. Not that I think she would mind at all. <laughs> Kind of see like with you know them slamming boxes around and stuff i feel like it's okay i do need to poke a hole in this saran wrap though so it's not too um humid in there i am very sad that i don't have any stickers or anything to put on this package i'm all out of stickers it doesn't feel quite like a pee pee poo poo German Alvin package without any stickers, but what are you gonna do? There she is. So now I just need to, um, I just need to find a box for it. So now I'm just gonna be spraying the plant down as best as I can and just giving it a good wipe down. Um, obviously, like, I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like <laughs> no one can really like ensure that a plant is like 100% pest free like whenever I see that someone selling a plant and it's just like no bugs never had bugs absolutely pest free I'm like but is it is it actually are you sure because sometimes you have like pests that are just like laying dormant they can be in the substrate whatever I'm not doubting anyone like I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who somehow just miraculously like don't have pests Maybe if you live like in Alaska or something. Yeah, I, I just think that like the expectation when buying a plant from anywhere, private collection, from a store, from a small business, you should expect, you should just expect pests. I think that there's a certain threshold for sure. Um, I think it's unacceptable if like you receive a plant from, like you buy a plant and it's just absolutely infested with with pests, like visible pests, there's like mealy bugs all over it, like that, absolutely. I would want my money back. You know, I'd send in a complaint or review or whatever. I wouldn't send in a review until I've contacted them first to see if they would remedy it. But, you know, I think there's a certain level, like if you see that it has like a spider mite or like one mealy bug or something, I don't think that you should automatically try and like cancel that person and like demand all your money back. I think that if you are expecting to be in this hobby and just like always get plants that are pest free, I just don't think it's realistic. I think that that just comes with the territory. If you wanna have house plants, you better know how to deal with pests if and when they, you know, come into your life. I feel like I could do like a whole series about that, especially as being like a mod in like, I would say the most popular plant group in our in our area. Like we've seen it all, you guys. And um, I would say that our like admin mod team is pretty hands-on with like handling um, different issues and stuff like that when a sale goes sour or, you know, something's going on. Like we do try and help as much as possible since the transaction happened within our group. I feel like I've seen so many people who just automatically want to go on a witch hunt the second they get a plant and it has like a mealy bug on it and they're just like, this is disgusting. Like I wanted my money back and I wanted money back for the gas I spent to go there. Like this is just outrageous. Um, I Yeah, I've just seen all the levels of it. What? Hello? Oh no, Vince is home. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. He was supposed to be at work until five o'clock and now he's gonna be here making all of this ruckus. Okay, sorry, I just got an alert because we track each other's locations. Um, Vince is home, which means he's gonna be running around all the place. Pudge is gonna be everywhere. So um, I think we'll, like I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera. I feel like you guys are, no, I'm not gonna do a time lapse. I feel like you guys are not really into time lapses. It actually kind of sounds good to keep watching American Horror Story and like doing this pest treatment stuff instead of talking. So um, 
I'm gonna go, but I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna do the rest of the repotting off camera. I'm really just getting these into moss. It's nothing special, but we have a long day tomorrow. There's gonna be more heavy lifting tomorrow. Vince will make a cameo in the video. And yeah, we're just gonna get shit done. So thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys. Um, I'll see you in a second. Hello friends, welcome back to week of, oh my gosh, it looks so different without the shelf there. Um, oh God, this lighting on this phone, uh, don't look. I guess I've looked worse. You should see what I look like after I eat a Big Mac. Anyway, um, so it is a little bit chaotic here. I don't even know where to begin. It's so late in the day because I've just been running around manically trying to get things done and also trying to work. But I'm gonna flip you around and just kind of show you what is going on. Okay, so here are some of the plants that I repotted yesterday that my friend is going to be picking up in a few days. Down here are some plants that are going to another friend. Um, she just moved into a new house, so she has space for plants. So that's all just kind of chaotic over there, right? And then behind me, um, like I mentioned, we moved the cabinet last night. And so I have this big empty spot here. I am not sure if this shelf is going to be shifting back this way or if I'm going to be putting my cabinet down here. I just have to like kind of gauge it with the clearance with the walkway here. Um, but I will take you guys through that later tonight. We're going to leave this for now, but I'm going to take you up into the plant room. <laughs> it's. I mean, it doesn't, I, I just cleaned it. Like it looked chaotic earlier, but this is the plant room right now. Let me do a wider view. I've started to clear out some things because this is where my desk is gonna go. So the plan is, um, I think I'm gonna be removing this bottom table, getting rid of it, putting the rug stud down on the floor. This Millsbo is gonna go into the living room where the empty space is. XO is gonna go on top of this guy and this is gonna shift over here. So essentially this is gonna replace that. And then this little unit is gonna move into the corner and then my desk will go right here. And I'm just hoping that everything fits because I've kind of um, measured it a little bit, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> No, <laughs> guys, sorry, I'm so distracted and it has spider mites, but look at all this white, 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 another white leaf, Lord. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm hoping that everything fits. I am just kind of eyeballing it right now. I think I'm going to get rid of my Milano. <laughs> it did push out like a nice leaf for me, but kind of a pain in the ass. Oh, also, I need to sweep, so I'm gonna show you this cool little gadget. So my mom showed up with this at my house the last time she visited, and I was laughing. I was like, what the heck is this? She's like, you use it to clean your floors, and I'm like, that's what a broom is for. But after using it, I'm like, oh, I actually do need this. I feel like I'm about to drop my phone. The cool thing about it is that it's like a squeegee, so it doesn't like, like the hair, your hairs and stuff, and dust doesn't get stuck on it and you can truly just like clean up pond, clean up soil, clean up everything and then just like sweep it up or just vacuum it up and you can get like all the little corners and stuff like I've been able to just kind of like <gasps> ew that's embarrassing see it picks up all this invisible crap ew that is so gross um, so anyway, yeah, I wanted to show you guys this thing. I will link it in the description. I think everybody needs one of these if you have hardwood floors. It is so, so much fun to use. And look at that. And it's great if you live in an apartment because you guys know that like we can't just use our vacuums whenever we want. Um, so late night repotting and stuff, if I need to like sweep things up and I can't use my, my vacuum, is the perfect little tool. 
So today I was, my plan was to show you more plants that I am unpotting, but that's like just so boring. I would rather just do that off camera. So instead, I am just gonna take you along as I prep to move everything tonight. Uh, my friend Nick is coming over in a couple hours and he's gonna help Vince move things around. So basically, I just need to kind of clear out this area and this area and just shove it all to the side. The rest I think can stay and I can just shift it with all the plants in there and hopefully nothing gets damaged. But um, I think while, like before I remove everything cause I'm probably just gonna do it like really quickly either through time lapse or I'm just gonna like cut pieces and just kind of show you how it all gets cleared out. Um, I thought I would just like show you guys some um, some plants while we're here. I am filming a favorites video that is gonna be coming out next week. I think I already mentioned that. So you'll probably see doubles again. I'm sure some of these will make a cameo in that video. So this one is an exciting one. This is an Anthurium Crystallinum Black. This was from my big crystal black that I chopped on camera. All of the, all of the stumps have um, come back to life I've decided just to keep one. I don't need to keep all of them. There's like three other props. I'm gonna just show you because they're so cute. Crystallinum black emergent leaves, like baby leaves, are freaking unmatched. They are so precious. They're like big people but little, like so tiny but big. <laughs> so, so cute. Yeah, they actually woke up super duper 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 fast. So these two are gonna be going to Lauren probably tomorrow cause we are, um, or not we, I'm selling more plants through her. She's doing another live sale coming up. So um, yeah, I'm gonna clear some space and bring this over to her shop. Anyway, going back to my own, um, I was actually really surprised at how big this one was considering it was just like a, actually no, this one, this one was the top. Yeah, this one was the top. That's why it's so big. Those ones are probably not gonna be anywhere close to this size but i think i just kept this one because it you know emerged first um it's just like so dark and just like the the venation is so bright and silvery i just love the crystal black it's definitely my favorite form of crystallinum and nobody can convince me otherwise my luxurians ralph Lightum fort sherman is pushing out a new leaf and i'm actually really um ew, there's a gnat um, I'm surprised at how like narrow these leaves are because I've seen other people's uh, hybrid of this and they're not as narrow. I don't know if it's gonna stay that way, but it's super cute. I'm excited to see how big this one is. Still really, really tiny, but honestly, I am in no rush to get anything <laughs> sizing up faster than I can handle. Baby leaves, I'll take them all day because then I can just like display them like this and it's really cute. Oh, so here's my tofu getty eye so this is uh the tofu anthurium like a lot of you guys might recognize from other videos alice i think alice anjing recently sold some um some seeds of this so this is mine it's a tofu anthurium which is probably a mag ace of spades hybrid crossed with a dark forgetty eye this is the newest leaf that came out on it that has this little like splash of silver She's so quirky, she's so cute. And I'm telling you, this sinus, I feel like I got one of the best seedlings. I'm just gonna keep saying that because it looks so different than all the other ones that I've seen. And it just gets better, every leaf. It just keeps getting better and better. And another leaf is coming out. This thing has been super freaking fast. That is very exciting because it has easily become one of my favorite hybrids in my collection for sure. And I just love that it was hybridized by my two plant besties. Ace of Spades finally put out a leaf that looks somewhat normal. Um, still kind of hardening off, but I'm glad. Like this thing was just like a little teeny tiny stump doing nothing for the longest time. And I wasn't even sure if it was my Ace of Spades. I need to like, I needed to like send all these photos to Alice. She knows my Anthurium IDs and my Anthurium collection better than I do, which is like freaking pathetic. But I just like sent her all of these, these hybrids and I was like, tell me what's what. And we narrowed down that this one was likely my ace of spades. And she was right, that girl, she is a freaking genius. So don't know where I'd be in this hobby without her. 
Speaking of Alice, my Wood Linger Eye from her is pushing out a new leaf as well. I'm telling you guys, this is what I live for with this plant. Like the hardened leaves are great, sure, they're fine, but I just can't with these emergent leaves. There's like nothing like it. This bronze color, it's not even doing it justice on camera, to be honest. It's just so, it's unreal. The sheen of it, like it, it just has like so many different colors to it. It's so sparkly and I'm just obsessed. So I'm happy to see a new leaf on it because it was dormant for the longest time and it looks like it's gonna be a decent sized leaf. Like you can see it's still quite floppy. So that's very exciting. Now this is not, this is not the official idea of it but this is what me and Alice have been calling it and these are just like our narrow politiflorums. Um, this is the one that I got like what was it, like two or three shows ago from Lauren. This is the newest leaf that just came out. Like, I don't know, I'm not the greatest at growing politiflorum. I feel like I've never been able to grow like a nice long strappy leaf, but this one is so cute. It's like a mini pally and just so skinny. Like look at how skinny and narrow these leaves are. It's, it's so good. It's so freaking good. I love seeing this thing in my cabinet, but yeah. Uh, it's grown quite a few leaves in my care. I'm sorry. This lighting is just like I usually try and turn off the back light before I film Couldn't be bothered today. I'm pretty sure I didn't finish my thought, but you guys should be used to that by now um, The Zara Michelle that I repotted in my last My last video don't remember when I did it, but it took to the transition well, moss to tree fern fiber soil. No new leaf on the way yet, but it's looking really perky and happy. So I am liking the, uh, the progress of that so far. Ooh, my carob queen. Carob, ugh, this is awful. I think this should be better. So my carob queen pushed out a new leaf finally. Everything looks so washed out. Um, this leaf is going out, but I'm gonna wait till I can't see any more green on it at all and then I'll um, remove it. But this leaf is so cute. It's my first one and I'm just like so happy. This texture is, oh, it's so, so cool. Um, but it looks so washed out and yellow on camera. What the hecky? Hello? Oh, there we go. It's a little darker and you can you can just see that like lizard like texture oh it's so good i hate doing this on camera i hate doing this on youtube it makes me feel so try hard because obviously you know like before i was on youtube and i would watch youtubers that were like doing makeup or hauls or whatever and then they'd just be like doing that thing and i used to think it was such like a a, just a YouTube thing to do like why do they have to do that you know but it's true like you have to it like helps the camera focus so anyway the last time I showed this I said there wasn't much to look at this is the pap port and it has a new leaf oh my gosh I'm so so excited about this hybrid I, I think it's probably one of my favorites that we've ever received in a shipment from Amanda and uh I honestly wasn't even expecting a cutting so soon from Alice, but I've said this before. That girl, she grows Anthurium like a hot damn, and she cuts it so fast. Like, I feel like, I feel like I haven't even been able to give her like one cutting of an Amanda plant that she didn't have because they're not growing. <laughs> they're not growing fast enough. And I think the last thing I'm gonna show you from this cabinet is my Anthurium red crystallinum. It's pushing out a new leaf, and oh my gosh, the the venation is so so red i'm so happy i have a second chance at this thing um it's funny amanda didn't even remember she sent that to me i i was like texting her one night and just like kind of showing her the progress of everything she's like oh where'd you get that and i was like from you bitch I'm like who else would i get it from um so it's pushing out a new leaf and i'm just like i will take care of you this time i promise i'll take care of it Anyway, that is all for the Ethereum updates that I'm gonna show you. So I'm just gonna quickly just move everything out and then we will move. Honestly, I don't really have much else to show you over here. I kind of wanna save the ones that I do wanna show you for the favorites video. So now I'm just gonna move you away and um, I will just start moving everything and hopefully, hopefully everything can fit on one side of the room because they need enough space to kind of pivot things around and move things and uh, just, you know, 
I don't know why I'm still talking. Everything is cleared out here that needs to be cleared out. Um, I'm gonna do stuff off camera, like the lighting and stuff, because obviously I need to unplug things and it's gonna be just dark in here. You're not gonna be able to see anything. And for some reason, when we had a blackout a couple nights ago, it reset all of my timer plugs, even though it shouldn't do that. And now the lights come on at night instead of during the day, it like switched it. And then my tent light doesn't turn on like ever. So I have to do a few things just off camera and, and get it um, figured out. And then, uh, yeah, Nick should be here somewhat soon. And depending on my energy levels, we'll start getting plants back in to where they're supposed to go. And I'll just get things kind of reorganized. I don't have a desk yet that I'm gonna be putting in here. I haven't even started to look at a desk that I want. But I, I think I'm going to be posting that part of it on my vlog and not on this channel. Um, but yeah. Oh, let me show you what the plant room looks like. It's like as I've been purging plants, I'm, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I have no plants left. And then I see them all kind of like here. And I'm like, oh my God, I have too many plants. Um, also, I'm so having, to, I'm so dreading having to do this, but I don't think that this little unit will fit in this corner um with this guy here because it's you know taking up a lot more space width wise than my rudsta is this is a little bit narrower not narrower it's less wide than the mills bow so that's gonna save some space but i still don't think that it's gonna fit so probably the next time you'll see the plant room is when things are already kind of set um but i will kind of show bits and pieces of nick and vince moving stuff oh can you take that top off take your top off <laughs> <laughs> you want me to you can get real freaky ah. they can watch <laughs> vincent <laughs> should we just put it on top of here now yes okay. so okay, ready mm -hmm. Got it? I'm good at my stand, I can hold.
Good morning, friends. Um, happy Thursday. So just wanted to quickly take you through the plant room. I'm still kind of in like disbelief how much, like how barren it looks. Like it just does not look like my plant room. I, <laughs> are you okay? I plan to put my desk right here. So obviously I need to like, remove nails and patch holes and maybe even do a little like repaint or something um, I did order my desk last night it is a really small desk way smaller than the one I have now and it should fit pretty perfectly here with like a lot of extra room going up here this is where I have my monstera now um, I have my second tortum up there my exos need to be like massively like cleaned like I spilled something in here like a month ago and never cleaned it up and then down there is kind of where all like the rehabs are gonna go now I think. Up here I have some of my prized plants uh, barely fitting in there. Alocasia, random philodendron, and then my props and things. Um, I was going to downsize my Hoyas as well, like downsize it even more, but I, I think it's good. Like I actually like how full it looks. I don't want the plant room to look too barren. I know things are gonna grow in. You know, there's. it's pretty inevitable that I, I'm gonna bring plants home, just not at the level that I was doing it before, um, just cause now I have way less space to put it. But overall, I think that I managed to fit everything here. Whoa. I think I managed to fit everything here pretty well. And a uh, tent is still in this corner. I'll give you guys a little peek. The lights are off right now. It has basically just turned into my little propagation area. Um, I don't know, I actually quite like it because then when I had plants in here that I wanted to enjoy, I just, I'd ha always have to go in here and like, I don't know, I just wasn't really feeling it. So now that I know that these are just for props, to me it's a lot more functional and um, everything seems to love it in here. So, anywho, that's that. I feel like I've been here a million times trying to like, get this organized, get it under control. I know it doesn't look bad right now, but um, it, it kind of really is bothering me. <laughs> I just feel like I have way too many things. I need to like downsize, I need to like refill my soil bin. So I think that's what I'm gonna do today is just try and get this a little bit more organized, try and like downsize things that I don't need or just get rid of things that I don't need. Um, I don't have a ton of time because Obviously, I woke up early today because I have to be at North Shore at 9.30. I have to pick up Alice, so I probably only have like an hour to like an hour and 15 to do anything I need to do this morning. Oh, uh, let me take you downstairs. Uh, obviously, you would have seen me doing this last night. I actually really like the way it looks. This was my old setup. I used to already like have my Millsbow wide here like ages ago. And the reason that I wanted to do away with that was because the plants that were up here, they just weren't getting enough light, especially in the fall and winter. So I am going to be, let me just back up, try not to fall. I'm gonna be installing a spotlight right here. I was gonna do track lights, it's just not in my budget. Um, Soltec lights are so freaking expensive. So I'm gonna do two spotlights up here, I think, and then just have it pointing down. Um, and that should take care of that and then kind of like brighten up this space a little bit. But yeah, that's what this looks like now. I'm actually really happy with it. I think it's really pretty. Now that my Mills bow is down here, I do wanna get things into glass vessels. Like I don't want any of these like plastic cups showing anymore. Like that is not passing the vibe check. 
Uh, so a little bit of work to do in here. Maybe I'll handle that like in the next week of or something. But um, yeah, that's that. <laughs> Somebody is begging for breakfast. Buddy, you're so cute. You're so cute. While we're on the topic of lights, um, like I mentioned, I'm doing the spotlights in the living room. So I ordered those on Amazon. I wanted to go cheaper on the light fixture. It's not like my favorite style or design, but since I kind of splurged on the bulb itself, which is the most important part, um, I got, you know, these kind of cheapy Amazon spotlights. So it was supposed to arrive, well, yeah, it was supposed to arrive yesterday and I was actually going to do like the installation of them. Um, on camera, but I got the delivery yesterday and the box was like the box was like this small I was like did I order the world's smallest spotlight? Is this why it was so cheap? Um, and I thought I was gonna have one of those moments, but I opened the box and This is what was inside I was like what? in tarnation did I order? I thought I was like seriously having like one of those moments where I was like, did I order this? Did I? Um, it's no file. Oh, my product showcase isn't on, but it's a nail file. Like one of those electric nail files. And so I went to do like the customer service thing to show them. Oh my God, this is so annoying. So I went to do the customer service thing where I was like, oh, you sent me the wrong item and they want me to send this back to them in order for me to get my stuff. I was like, no, you are Amazon. It makes more sense, makes more sense for you to be like, you messed up. Just send whoever ordered this, whatever $10 nail file, send them another one and just send me what I ordered. So I need to deal with that today um, because the customer service is only letting me do like the return like return and then buy a new one which is like super annoying so i'm gonna try and get on uh get on with customer service today and not get it did i say get it on with customer service today yeah i'm gonna try and talk to customer service today to see if like i can get my lights in the least annoying way possible um also again on the topic of light so this was the light that was illuminating this entire sort of thing in my last setup. This is the Sansi bulb. Very, very powerful, very strong. My plants, they just, they freaking loved it. Like look at how much this thing sized up using this light. The only reason that I didn't opt for a Sansi bulb instead of Soltec, it's not like I'm like 100% like pro Soltec, you know what I mean? Like I don't have a partnership with them. I'm not like an affiliate or anything. They have nice bulbs. Um, I would say like they're the most trendy, popular um, grow light company out there in my opinion but to me it's just too much the the bulbs the bulb prices there's just too much but i was like you know what i'll splurge i'll buy two lights see how it does once those are done for i'll probably just go with sansi but the only reason that i went with soltech is because it has a slightly warmer light than the sansi bulb and I was talking to Amanda about this and she's like, yeah, it's kind of annoying because I, I feel like I'm paying more for like the warmth that I want rather than like the quality. Because I truly feel like the Sansi bulbs can perform as well um, as the Soltec lights. I'm not trying to shade anyone. I'm just, I'm just saying like, you know, the, the Soltec lights were so freaking expensive. I wish that I could have gotten a Sansi bulb, but um, yeah, the, the warmth matters a lot to me in the living room so i decided to just go that way so anyway with this light i need to find a way to illuminate this behind me so obviously these two are fine these greenhouses this is fine here it's really just this and my monstera up there that i need to figure out so there's a chance that i may actually just buy a second spotlight and use the Sansi bulb in there because I'm not too pressed about having like a warmer light in here. I would prefer it obviously, but I think I am gonna do the spotlight up here too and get these kind of lit up. Anyway, I've blabbed so much and I probably only have like half an hour now to get things done. So yeah, I'm gonna start pulling things out of the closet and refilling some of my bins.
look at these cutie pie glitter straws i guess you can't really see the glitter right now but i got these glitter straws from the dollar store and it comes in like this cute blue color pink green and another color i think there's like four different colors in the pack and it's brought me a lot of joy <laughs> so anyway go to your dollar store if you are healing your inner child okay let's um i'm okay okay and and you gather my thoughts so Unfortunately, I would say like at least half of this whole closet is stuff that we're storing for our landlord and um, Yeah, like all that stuff up there is my landlord's this entire purple box that takes up half of the closet is a light fixture that used to be here So this is like not all my stuff and I just try and like fit as much as I can I have a bunch of extra lights in here. I have like all of my grow sticks, my grow poles, my extra glass. So those things I don't think that I can really necessarily get rid of, but I'm sure there are things in here that I don't need. I can already see one. Okay, it's way too hot. Why am I in a sweatshirt? So much better. I've basically been living in my Tropics Narcotics t-shirts. I love them so much. I think I need to like splurge and just get all of them or something. Um, okay, so what I was gonna show you is I had contemplated getting rid of this in my last clean out, but I was like, uh, you know what? Like it might be nice to have a bigger one. I never reach for it ever. So I can get rid of this, tried it, kind of hated it. Outdoor planting is just not for me. I don't have a desire to be like outside watering my plants and doing all these things um it, it's just it's a hundred percent not for me i think this is like the third year now that i've tried to do it um if anything i think i would like to try and grow things indoors but outdoor gardening it's not happening i have way more de than i'm ever gonna need in my lifetime i'm not even using this a lot anymore so i think i'll just keep one jar i'll put these in a ziploc bag and i will give it away to someone locally I have my little box of decorative things. I have like my dollar store rocks, my dollar store moss and stuff, which I still want to keep, but I think I'm just gonna, I have this whole thing of rocks that I can downsize. I think I can stick my little mushies in here too. Um, I don't know why I have this little tiny thing of Lekka. Oh gosh. Oh my. Oh my gosh, I forgot I had these mushroom stickers. So I think um, I think I'll put it on my computer or something once it's in here. Since my computer and all of my work stuff, like my desk stuff, is gonna be in my videos now, um, I need to try and like make it look a little bit cuter. Cause in my office, I really don't like. I don't care about like the aesthetic in there. It's just I just want it to be functional for us. I have this whole little like grid wall of all of my sentimentals, letters that I've gotten from friends, birthday cards that um, I really love, artwork from Millie. So um, I am planning to still put all of that up here. I don't want my desk to just be plain because it's in my plant room now. Yeah, it's just, I like being surrounded by that when I'm working, so. It's all going to have to come in here. I don't know how I'm going to fit it all, but we're going to figure that out. And again, I'm going to do that on my blog, blog, on my blog, because um, it's not super plant related. Um, and I haven't posted a vlog in ages. So that'll go up probably in a week or a week or two from now. And my vlog channel is linked in um, on my YouTube channel. Okay. This thing is pretty nifty though, so I wanna keep this. I wanna try and use up all of this like super asteroid size perlite because it's, I don't know, I'm not really using it that much and it's just kind of taking up space. None of this can go because this is, can you guys even see what I'm doing? Um, yeah, kind of. Okay, so up here, this is tree fern fiber. This is orchiata. This is mixed pond and this is unsifted, unmixed party pond 
so I need all of this to stay as it is because I reach for it quite often. Um, I'd like to keep this bottom shelf clear down here because I do keep my laundry detergent and stuff. Since my laundry room is right here, I want to like be able to have space there. I feel like I just have too much stuff up here. Okay, so I have pumice, which I don't really ever use. Um, I guess I could mix it with my pawn. I could either mix it with my pawn or in a soil batch. I have Osmocote, which I'm not using a ton either. Um, and then worm castings. Sulfur dust, which I use for my callusing, my callusing mix. Kelp extract, which I do use as a foliar spray and systemic. I'm getting rid of this because I am not scared of thrips anymore. I would much rather deal with thrips a different way. Amidacloprid has like, whatchamacallit? It's, it's linked to um, an increased number of spider mites and that is the last freaking thing I need right now. I feel like I don't need as many jars in here. If anything, I can move some of these to the kitchen. Oh my gosh. If this thing falls one more time, I'm gonna scream. Um, up here, oh gosh. Oh, this is what, this was my extra. I actually organized this in a different video, so I do need all that. I have all of my um, my scoops. I'm not gonna need this anymore because I'm not doing any outdoor gardening. And then I'll think I think I'll use this for my my scoops now. Biochar, I do use this. Phyton 33. I'm not really using this anymore because I don't really deal with fungal issues at like at all. Um, I originally got this for my anthurium when they were all living in a greenhouse because I just was always getting like spots on the leaves and like just like I, I don't know it was it was like not good for me um, anthurium inside of a greenhouse is I had as many problems as anthurium outside of a greenhouse but now that my anthurium are all acclimatized for the most part like it's so much better so I think I will get rid of that too decorative sand can go into my decor box. I don't need like a whole ass jar for it. I don't know what I was thinking. I would say that's pretty good. Let me just get things back in here really quick. Uh, down here, I have all of my like sticks for my poles and stuff, which I, I don't really like the way it's organized at the moment. I, I think it needs to go in here, but that's where I keep my extra lights, which maybe my extra lights go somewhere else, like up here or something. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Uh, okay, let's just grab all of the lights that I do have. I feel like I don't need three potting mats, probably. So, but but I like that one is square and one is rectangle. I don't like that this one broke and it can't be clasped. Clasped. Um, this is just extra. Oh, oh, this is just extra. I guess I could use this in my kitchen. Guys, I'm, I'm losing steam. I don't know what I'm doing. I've lost all motivation. Um, these are those like sticks from Lauren, the clear acrylic plant sticks, which I really, really love. So yeah, I think, okay, let's move that out of the way. I can stick this in my cabinet with my pots. This is stuff for my steam cleaner, which I think I can try and squeeze in my other cabinet. Oh no. I thought that I would use these. They just don't work well for me. I don't ever keep plants like damp enough, like wet enough or dense enough that this works properly. So I'm gonna donate that as well. A little mini potting mat, which honestly I never use. I think the idea of it was nice, but I just, I never pull this out. So I will um, give this away. Guys, it's looking decent in here already. No, no cap. Is that what? 
Is that what the young ones say these days? No cap? I'm not capping. It really does look good in here. Oh, you know, I thought I could fit it right there, but that's not gonna work. Okay, plan B. So I keep some of my like older, like not so nice towels in here for when I'm doing plant things on the ground or if I'm like spraying something and it's like dripping. I like to just have these on hand so I'm not using my nice towels. My mother-in-law, we cleared out her, her townhouse for her before she moved to Edmonton. And I don't know, I think she just really liked towels. But she had an entire closet, essentially what felt like floor to ceiling, of just towels. Just so many towels. Um, so I'll keep that there. Bottom, like I said, is going to be for laundry detergent. I think everything that needed to go in here is now in here. Oh my, um, I have so many of these like glass, these glass, whatchamacall, extra glass from my, my Rudsta and stuff. And I don't love where it's sitting, but at the same time, I like that I can reach for it. I know you can't see it, but it's leaning up against this wall. I think I can scooch the, can I? Scooch this over a little bit more. Okay, 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 everybody calm down, please. If I could just squeeze everything into here, that would be wonderful. Oh my gosh, look, would you look at that? Um, the rest of this stuff, honestly, is, like I said, my landlord stuff and my camping stuff. So that, that's fine. It's looking so much better. Oh my gosh, I can actually like, like walk in now and like fit stuff. I, I mean, I don't have to fit stuff, but I can if I want. Here's all the stuff I managed to pull out of there that is not gonna go back inside. I just need to find a spot for my lights and for my potting mats. Um, I do think that they can fit somewhere in this closet. This one's actually pretty empty. Um, this I need to clear out. I'm not doing that on camera or anything because that's just like my storage stuff. Oh, but I did organize my, my glass vessels and my pots finally. It was looking crazy here for a bit, but now it's all organized. I have more plastic things in there too, but see all this craziness? This used to be organized and then I just like, messed it all up again. And uh, in here too is just kind of a mixture of plant stuff and um, like storage things, but truly there are things that I don't even know what's in here, so they can probably just go. All right guys, well I think that's gonna wrap it up for this week because I have 10 minutes to pack everything up and get out of here. I have to go pick up Alice soon at North Shore today. I was, I was gonna try and like film and bring you guys with me, but then um, Alice told me last night that she's filming, so I don't really wanna like overlap with her video. But Amanda has sent Lauren a new package. I think it's stuff from the pre-order. Um, Lauren did a big pre-order for bunny plants and I think she ordered some personal plants. So um, head over to Alice's video. I think it's gonna go up the day after this one on her channel um, to see what she sends. I'm super excited to see it. So I'm like anxious to get over there. But yeah, other than that, I know this week was a little bit different than all of the other week ofs that I did, but I truly right now am just in my like, I wanna feel lighter, I, I don't wanna be overwhelmed with things I don't need, plants I don't need, and just like the excess of it all. I don't know, that's been kind of a running theme this year. Um, it was a huge inspiration into why I even got a vlog up because I kinda wanted to take you guys along with me as I like purge my apartment of things that I've just been holding on to for no reason. And I certainly have a lot of plant things that fall under that category. Obviously, I've done a lot of cleaning today, but I can guarantee you that there's at least still another garbage bag full of things that I could fill up just from this plant room alone to donate or get rid of. Um, so that's what I'm gonna continue doing. Maybe we'll continue it in the next week of, but I think that's gonna wrap it for today. Don't forget that the if you wanna see what the desk installation is gonna look like, that'll go up on my blog. I will maybe take you guys along with me when I install my lights that are gonna go up in here and in the living room 
and um, yeah, I'm excited. Overall, I'm excited. I was feeling very anxious about this whole process and I was like, am I just having like sort of like a manic episode because I get like that sometimes where I just do things very hastily. I do things without super thinking it through because that's just what I want in the moment and I'm very just uh, like I act on impulse and um, sometimes it bites me in the butt but sometimes after I'm like oh yeah I actually do feel better so I am feeling good now that I've had like a few days to process this and actually see the plants going out and see who's left I'm like this feels really really nice like it just feels so nice um, I already feel so much lighter I feel like I can breathe a little bit more and uh, truth be told, I'm anxious to get those plants out of here that are going to go to friends um, and that I'm selling. So, <sighs> yeah, that's it. Um, I hope that maybe this video inspired you if you've been kind of in the same boat as me and have been wanting to kind of like get things back in order, get things, get your collection back down to a size that's a, a bit more manageable. So anyway, thank you guys again for watching another video. Thank you for making this series such a fun one, such a successful one. Um, I owe a lot to you guys for, I don't know, just being here for the long videos because it's, yeah, it's, it's tiring, but it has changed my life in a way that I can't thank you guys enough for. Um, in a sense that like the long videos are essentially what allowed me to make this into a career so thank you so much i'm so grateful for you guys i don't know why i feel like crying um i just yeah i hit i'm crying i hit a lot of wow sherman you surprised me i was not expecting that um i can't even look at you guys right now i hit a lot of milestones in the last um few months this year has been like pretty life-changing for me i know it may not seem like it but i am super grateful for you guys so thank you so much um i don't really like pour my heart out on this channel a lot and it's a lot of like shits and giggles and jokes on this channel but yeah i really um i'm just so glad you guys are here so thank you and i'm gonna go and i'll see you in the next one <laughs> bye